In this video, I'm going to teach you the most important business skill that I know. I was lucky enough to learn it early on, and I'm happy to be sharing it with you today. Here's a question for you. How much is your time worth? How much does one hour of your time actually cost? Knowing the answer to this simple question is absolutely crucial when it comes to achieving your financial goals, but if you ever want to run your own business, good luck trying to scale without it. Knowing your value per hour allows you to delegate and outsource properly, letting you spend more time on projects that actually grow your business and things you actually enjoy doing. For example, let's say your time is worth $50 an hour. I'll show you how to calculate this later. Why would you ever mow your own lawn again? Let's say it takes an hour to mow the lawn. Getting someone else to do it for you costs about $25 an hour. If you do it yourself, then sure, you've saved $25, but in reality, you've actually thrown $25 in the trash can because your time would have been better spent generating income. If instead you would have just worked for an hour, you'd be up $25. Plus you have put in another hour towards developing your career and leveling up in life. Which if you ask me is a shit ton better than mowing the lawn. Here's another example. I offer one-on-one -on -one hour long consultations to help entrepreneurs with their digital marketing strategies. An hour of my time cost nearly $2,000. Did I make up this number from thin air? Nope, it's what the numbers told me my time is worth. If I charged any less than this, I'd be losing money. This isn't some foo-foo mindset stuff like the power of attraction or mantras like, if you value yourself, others will too. There's an actual mathematical basis behind this concept of knowing your worth. And in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to calculate it, your EHR, your effective hourly rate, and more importantly, how to apply it in your life to achieve your goals. But before I do that, I'd like to give a shout out to the sponsor of this video, the like button. Research shows that smashing the like button is the one thing that unicorn level CEOs have in common. Jokes aside, it helps my channel out a bunch. It also lets me know that you want to see more content like this. So thanks. Now, before we get into the calculation side of things, let me lay out a few more use cases to illustrate just how valuable knowing your worth actually is. The first is goal setting. Let's say you wanted to make a million dollars and your effective hourly rate is $50 per hour. How many hours do you need to work? We take 1 million divided by $50 per hour and we get 20,000 hours. Considering that the standard that most people work is 40 hours per week and 50 weeks per year, if we take 2,000 hours divided by 40 then divide by 50, that means it'll take 10 years. Oh! Let's think about this number, 10 years. Maybe you're cool with it, but most likely you're not. How can you shorten this timeline? You can either work more or increase how fast you make money. I'm gonna assume you don't wanna work more than 40 hours per week. So let's figure out how to optimize your situation. Many people these days have multiple income streams. Maybe you work at your jobby job in the daytime and at nighttime you have a side hustle building a website that makes you passive cash flow. Or maybe you're an entrepreneur that has a few things going on, an agency selling SEO services and a brick and mortar company selling Dutch ovens. Your effective hourly rate is your average, your baseline. It's how much you make in total divided by how much you work. But different income streams earn money at different rates. Let's say your effective hourly rate overall is $50 per hour. You have a side hustle website that makes you $100 per hour, but you also drive an Uber for $25 an hour. I think you already know what I'm going to say here because the writing is on the wall. If you want to make more money, you need to cut out all these time sinks that are not efficiently generating income and instead double down on all the huge money makers. By doing so, you'll be raising your value per hour. If you simply stop driving for Uber and focused on your $100 per hour side hustle website, you've instantly changed your value per hour from $50 to $100. And now you can dedicate all your time to figuring out how to get that website to make more money. Here's another example if you had a service-based business serving clients. Let's say you had one client that was paying you $2,000 a month, but you were dedicating 80 hours per month to them. That's $25 per hour. But you had another client paying you $1,000 per month, but you're only working 10 hours per month for them. That's a $100 per hour client. You need to get on the phone, fire client number one and spend the rest of the week finding more ideal clients that pay higher than your effective hourly rate. This is how you grow. If you consistently choose the right battles to fight, you'll grow your value per hour over time. Here's another use case, delegation. Being able to effectively delegate your tasks is probably the best benefit of knowing your worth. If you own your own business, this is going to be the absolute key to scaling. Remember before when I gave the lawn mowing example? The premise is like this. You don't want to be doing anything, and I mean anything, that you could be outsourcing for cheaper than your hourly rate. But it doesn't just stop with mowing the damn lawn. You should start outsourcing stuff like content writing, meal delivery, administration tasks, cleaning, laundry, emailing, and each and every entry-level task behind whatever business you're involved in does. What are you going to do when you get all this free time? You're going to start working more on those projects that make you more money than your effective hourly rate. Because 
Doing so will increase your effective hourly rate over time. If your rate is $50 per hour and you start ditching all your menial tasks so you can focus on your $100 per hour projects, then eventually your value per hour will become $100 per hour. And then what should you do after that? Once again, start delegating all your tasks that make you less than $100 per hour. The great thing is that there's a lot of stuff that you can hire out for that price. Now you're looking at hiring full-time staff and skilled professionals, simply because you first decided not to mow the lawn anymore. Keep the cycle going. This is the key to scaling and getting to your financial goals faster. The next use case revolves around time wasting. Knowing your effective hourly rate makes it pretty damn difficult to waste time. You'll be able to tie an actual cost to hours wasted. How often do you find yourself scrolling through Instagram, Facebook, or Lord forbid, TikTok on your phone? I get it. It's addicting as hell. YouTube is clearly my poison. Just know if your value is $50 per hour, then a two-hour rabbit hole watching trick shot videos just costs you $100. Another use case is pricing. If you're a freelancer or service provider, how much should you charge? Let's say you're a search engine optimization freelancer. I suppose you could just Google search engine optimization salaries and find an article like this saying you should expect to make $63,000 per year. But does this arbitrary number even fit in with your goals? $63,000 per year equates to roughly $31.50 per hour. If your effective hourly rate is $50 per hour and you charge your clients the industry standard of $31.50 per hour, then you're pretty much preventing yourself from growing. Knowing your worth is about knowing your worth. Who cares what the industry standards are? Price yourself based on what your value is, period. The last use case I got for you shouldn't be slept on. It's about protecting your time. Along your journey, there's going to be distractions. People will ask things from you that are going to steer you away from a achieving your goals. Just know that there's a cost to everything. I'm not saying to become a recluse or to stop helping people, but always be aware that there's an indeed an opportunity cost from wasting time. Okay, so let's get into how to accurately calculate your effective hourly rate, your EHR. There's a few different systems for doing this, and to be frank, I find that they're all pretty inaccurate, except for the one I'm about to show you. Accuracy is key. If you think that you work 100 hours per month, but you actually work 50, then your EHR is going to be 2x off and you're going to be royally f***ing up all your scaling, hiring, and delegation. Essentially, you need to know two numbers. How much money you make in a given month divided by how much time you work in a given month. It's pretty easy to determine the top number. Just look at your earnings from the last three months and take the average. Since income can go up and down, especially if you're an entrepreneur, you want to take the average to balance things out. Figuring out the hours you work per month is a little bit more challenging because many people just guess. They figure that they work eight hours per day because they start working at nine and end at five. Trust me, when you start doing this task, you'll see how much you actually work. On Monday, the second you start doing a task, you're going to write down what time you started and what time you finished it. So as you can see here, the first thing I did that morning was optimize my Facebook ads for six minutes. Then for your next task, you're going to do the same thing. Jot down the start and end time. Continue doing this throughout the day. You only want to be charting the time that you're actually working. Don't count time you spend on Instagram. Don't even count when you go to the bathroom. At the end of the day, you'll end up with a list like this. And from here, you can make a total of how many hours you worked in a given day. And I guarantee it's not even close to your expectation. Do the same thing each of the other days in the week. Don't assume that you work just as hard on Friday as you do on Monday. Now that you know how much time you work in a week, you can figure out how much you work in a month. Since it's roughly 4.25 weeks in the average month, just multiply your hours in a week by 4.25. Now you have all the pieces to the puzzle and you can calculate your EHR. In the description, I left a link to a guide I wrote, which goes into this in more detail. So check it out after you watch this video. Now here's where you can go beast mode with things. Remember how we were literally tracking every single task and how long they take individually? Couldn't it have been easier to just track the time you spent working without attaching it to tasks? Well, if you have multiple income streams, now you can figure out the EHR for each business. Calculate the EHR for each of your income streams and compare them to your average. For the gigs that don't make the cut, it's time to call them off, double down on your big money makers instead, and make sure to subscribe for more videos just like this one.